Oh, there we go. Fobber's dancing. We got one. Oh yeah. Got one already. Look at that. First one. That was super, super easy. Catching bluegill is supposed to be fun, easy, and not complicated. And there's a ton of videos out there that are making it super complicated. In this video, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to catch bluegill. It's super fun, a great way to spend some time out on the water. So whether this is your first time fishing or the first time in a long time fishing, this should make it super easy for you to get into some fish. And you only really need a few things. You need hooks, you need some weights, you need a bobber, and you need some worms. So we're gonna go into that right now. So the first thing you're gonna need are hooks. I like a size six or a size four Aberdeen hook. These are size six. You can get these almost anywhere. Uh, Walmart, any fishing tackle store will have some. My favorite knot to tie for this is a pizza knot. You put the line through your hook, you reach over, you pinch your tag in, and you're gonna flip your hook six to seven times over this line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And you're gonna take this line, drive it through the loop that you made when you pinched it, and you're gonna cinch it down a little bit, wet your line, and then you pull. And you're done, easy peasy. The next thing I like to do is put on a split shot sinker. They're super easy. I usually just use this for casting. It just helps me cast a little bit farther if I need to. And then finally, your float. I like slotted floats. In fact, these are the ones I'm gonna to use today, but you can also use weighted floats. If you're gonna use weighted floats, you don't really need the split shot. I just find that sometimes this gets in the way. Um, the fish can feel the weight a little bit more on the float versus feeling the weight of the split shot. So we're gonna go with these. These are super easy to put on. You just line the slot with the line. You put the line through. This guy already has some wear because I've used it a few times. You take your peg, you put your peg down, you give it a little tug, and it's super easy. I also like these because I can easily adjust the depth. For example, I don't want it to be that far down. We are dealing with some shallow water, and that's the length. The hook is down here, split shot there, float right there. Push it down a little bit, make sure it's secure. And now, the worm. Again, this is not super complicated. These are red worms from Wally World. You can go out and dig for your worms if you want i bought these i had these and if they're good enough for bill dance they're good enough for me i like to use these because the worms aren't massive they're just the right size for what i'm trying to go for and the rigging is super easy we're gonna hook this guy twice we're gonna hook him once through the little egg sack right here we're gonna run it up and you can get away with just hooking them once i like to hook them twice so i don't immediately lose the worm and then we're gonna hook him again right through there. And that's basically it. He's got a nice lively action and we should be getting a bite on that. You got your rod, you got your reel, you got your line. All you gotta do is cast it out. So casting is pretty simple. Just pinch your line like this with your finger, open your bail, and you just give it a little nice toss out there. And if there are fish out there, you're gonna see that bobber drop. Oh, 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 there we go. Bobber's dancing. We got one. Do we? Yep. Oh yeah. Got one already. Boom. Just like that. And he's fighting hard too. Look at that. First one. That was super, super easy. And that's why I like the size six hook because it easily fits in their mouth. If I was going for bigger fish, I might size up to a size four, but this is the perfect size bait hook. There we go. Nice and easy. We're going to put them back. Well, we still got our worm we just have to fix them up back on the hook and we'll be good to go now if you cast it out there and you see that nothing's really going for your worm you want to do one of two things one you can wait i usually do like a 10 count or you can just reel it in a little bit it could be that it's not in front of them or it's already hit the bottom for them but you're more likely to get hit if the lure is on the top look we just got one boom got one nice another one this one's slightly bigger look at that guy beautiful colors all right we got him free we're gonna throw him back that last fish made me lose my worm so we're gonna put a new one on 
One thing I also like to do is pinch down the barb a little bit. You'll see it right there. I pinched it down. It just makes it easier to unhook the fish if you're going to do catch and release. You don't have to do it. I just like to do it. Oh, got one. Oh. And that is a good example right there of what you don't want to do. I felt a fish take the hook. I saw my bobber go down. And oh, we'll come back to it. This is a good one. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh, buddy. Hello. There we go. Nice and easy. We'll put him back. As I was saying, I saw my bobber go down and I immediately set my hook with a jig and pulled that hook out of the fish's mouth. You really want them to take it and set the hook themselves. So I just cast it out and wait. And when you go to set the hook, there's one of two ways you can do it. You can either reel, which is what I've seen some people do, or you can do kind of like a lean. So I'm gonna do both. Next time I get hooked, I'll show you what it's like to just reel it, and then I'll show you what it's like to lean. All right, now we're just gonna reel, and that's all you need to do. Just gotta reel, just like that. The fish hooked itself. Nothing too crazy. Don't have to set the hook like your Kevin Van Dam. Nice little beautiful bluegill. We're gonna put him back. All right, this one I'm gonna show you the sweep. One of the biggest complaints I always hear is that this is slow fishing. And while it's not as fast as like running around, throwing a spinner bait or a crank bait, it's only as slow as you make it. I'm letting it sit there for like five to 10 seconds before I reel it in a little bit, seeing if I can get a bite somewhere else. You can be one of those people who like sit there and let it soak for the longest time if you want. That's not how I like to fish. So I will just work it like I do a jig really with the soft plastic on it. I'll let it sit out there, let it do what it does for like 10 seconds. Cause if it's in front of a fish, it'll eat it. And if nothing's happening, I'll just reel it in a little bit. One, two, three, give it some movement. Put it in front of some new fish. Look, see, just like that. And now I'm just gonna lean, just like that. Just a nice little lean and I've set the hook. Boom, this guy's a little heavy. And just like that, look at that. Beautiful bluegill, nice one. Let's talk about rod and reel for a hot minute. This is a 13 Fishing Source K. It's an ultralight reel. I have a few other reels that I like, but this is a really good one. It's budget friendly. It's about 20 to $30. The rod's pretty simple. Um, it's a 13 Fishing Defy Silver rod. It's an ultralight rod. This is a six foot six rod. And if you really have, wanna have a lot of fun catching these fish, you're gonna wanna get an ultralight rod, at least a light rod. And the reason for that is, you've seen me catch a few of these already. They are not big fish compared to other species that you can target. So if you have like a medium rod, medium heavy rod, and you're using it to catch bluegill, it's not gonna be as fun. The fight's not gonna be as fun. So it's always gonna be better. Oh gosh, uh, I was too busy talking. As I was saying, <laughs> the reason you want an ultralight rod is because the fight's just gonna be a lot more fun. If you don't have an ultralight rod, these fish are just going to not feel like anything at the end of your rod. It's not gonna be as fun. So get yourself a nice ultralight rod. You can go, in fact, I was at Walmart yesterday and saw an ultralight combo for about 25 bucks. A Shakespeare Micro Series is a great rod. That's the rod that came with it with a cheap little Shakespeare ultralight reel. It even had line on it. Go ahead and get one and you'll be able to have fun like this. You can pick all this up in the same spot. Ah, oh, geez. These fish might be really small. Ooh, I almost lost all my worm. They took a good chunk of it. Check that out. That's all I'm left with after all that. And you know what? We're gonna throw this right back out. Because even with something like this, something small, you don't need to have a full worm. I prefer to have a full worm, but you don't need to have a full worm. Even with something like that, what's left of a worm, they'll come for it. 
right there. That's what I want. Ooh, got something. Instant. <sighs> nice one. Ooh, this is probably the biggest of the day. Nope, second biggest. Oh, he's just round. He's not even that big. He's just really round. That's awesome. There we go. Nice, beautiful bluegill. On this little tiny piece of worm. We're going to fish this little tiny piece until it gives out. Sometimes it's a float. I have one. I have one on. Ooh, this one feels good. This one feels really good. What is it? There are largemouth bass in here. Nope. Another bluegill. A beauty of a bluegill at that. Look at that. Whew. I love catching these. These bright, beautiful ones. Man, the little copper nose looking guys. Deep, deep colors. Nice one. We're going to put them back. And that one piece of worm is still hanging on strong. This one piece has outlasted um, like five worms already. Got one. Littlest. Oh my goodness. Yo, check this baby bluegill out. This is literally what you would tie onto a hook and catch a big bass with or like a big catfish with this little guy is so cute we're gonna put this little guy back hopefully it'll grow and get bigger that little guy was the one who did it in for the worm though so we're gonna put a new worm on we still got a little bit more time to fish the other thing you want to make sure you're using correctly besides rod and reel is your line right now i have four pound tests Ooh, that's a good one wow that guy jumped the rod loaded up and sent him flying. Man, <laughs> he was running. He had a case of the zoomies. As I was saying, you don't want to have too heavy of a line. Between six to two pound test is where I like to stay. Um, that way you can cast out just the float, just the hook, just the worm. If you have anything heavier, it's going to be really hard for you to cast out. Um, and you don't really need heavy line. Ooh, 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 ooh. If you feel a tug and then they just leave it alone, more often than not, you've lost the worm. Just go ahead and uh, put on another worm. Pop her down. Nice. Giving me some good head shakes. This is a good bluegill. Here we go. We're gonna put him back. I'm gonna pass the worm through a few more times because this worm's getting a little thin on me. instant instant got another one that one didn't even wait <laughs> i must found the school oh look at this guy this guy has some red eyes that's so cool we're gonna put him back in the water all right we still got some worm on we're gonna fish until this worm comes off got one yep there we go there we go. Oh my goodness, the colors on this one. Look at that orange belly. That's a beauty right there. That is a beauty. We're gonna put this one back. Jeez. Hooey, got it. Hooey, this was fighting. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Biggin. That's a nice size one right there. That's one that we would take home. Look at that. Just nice and long. Beautiful. We're gonna put this one back. He's a little wily. Like I said, it's easy, it's fun. It's a great way to spend time on the water and catch some fish. But if you wanna make it a little bit more challenging and learn how to use some soft plastics, I have a video right here on the best bluegill bait.